Good morning, everyone. We're gathered here together to celebrate our unsung heroes, our first responders, and to honor God. Amen? Please stand for the entrance of the color guard from the Roseville American Legion. Let, when the color guard salutes, give a heart salute. Here they come. Thank our veterans for their service. Please sit down, everybody. We come together in the midst of a pandemic that has hit the world. And we live in the Twin Cities where George Floyd was killed and where unrest and upheavals have swept across our nation and the world. We stand at our state capitol and reach out and ask God to, to heal our nation. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, we read, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Jesus Christ taught us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. This is the first commandment. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We come together in this spirit to appreciate our first responders and our unsung heroes. People who put their lives on the line and serve the public good. They truly put into action, love your neighbor. Every day, all responders, all first responders in the Twin Cities, all throughout our nation, and all throughout the world, we salute you. Our songs and our music is provided today by our own Robert Robinson, accompanied by Sam Reeves on the piano. Please join me in welcoming Robert and Sam. And as they perform, if you hear something you like to, to sing along with, please join in. Wow, wow, what a tribute to America. What a tribute to our first responders. Thank you, Robert Robinson and Sam Reeves. We applaud you, we appreciate you, we love your music. Next, we want to bring God into the program, and we have Reverend Jim Bard from the Minnesota Family Church to open us with prayer. Reverend Bard. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Let's pray together. <clears throat> A dear God in heaven, we thank you for all of your love and all of your blessings. We thank you from the, for the beautiful song we just heard. 
Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for all good things. And we could be so blessed as to live in this land, this land of promise. We ask your blessing on it. We ask your blessing on all our leadership from President Trump and Governor Walls, Mayor Carter, Mayor, Mayor um, Fry, and all the other le civic leaders at every level. Please, we ask that you would, that they would open their hearts, that they would receive your wisdom and your courage, and they would seek you out, and that each one of us, each one of us here today, will make you proud of us, that we would do your will. Please allow us to be guided by you. Please grant us your wisdom. Grant us your courage. Speak through all our brothers and sisters speaking here today. Let us hear your voice. We, as your children on this earth, we here today, each one of us, come bound together in love. And we ask that you would accept our offering that you would accept our offering to bring healing to this land, bring blessing upon all our first responders who give themselves so freely to protect ourselves, to heal us when we need it. Please be with all of our, our, our first responders. We ask that you heal our land, that we would be worthy of it, and that we could share this great blessing. We are truly the envy of the world and the envy of ages past and ages to come. We are so blessed, but let us multiply this blessing. Let us receive it. Let us be worthy of it. Let us follow in your ways. Let us, let us really manifest your goodness on this earth in everything we do, in everything we say, in everything, in, in everything we think. Please allow this upon us, and may your blessing be with each and everyone here. And again, we ask your healing upon our land and that we would fulfill the hope and dream you have for each one of us and for this nation of America and the state of Minnesota. We thank you and we offer you this prayer together, brothers and sisters, thanking you. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, Reverend Bard. Thank you very much for that heartfelt prayer. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome Reverend Jerry Peltier. He is the chaplain for the Forest Lake American Legion, post 25. Thank you, and thank you for being here to uh, give support to this very special tribute. First responders, we know are those on the front line of responding as a country, as a state, and as a community. They are people that stand up before us and say who we are. The book of Hebrews 13, 16 says, share with others and with such sacrifice, God is pleased. Greater love has no one than more than one who gives up one's life for others. And we always acknowledge that in Psalms, the heart of God is expressed. He will deliver you from the pestilence that walks in darkness and the destruction that lays a weight in noonday. That's the promise of God to bless, protect, and provide for our first responders. It's an honor to be here today to recognize the vast array that we have of first responders across this country and really across the world. We are the protectors. And I see the folks from Vietnam are here. I, uh, my heart was pierced when I saw your general die, died about a year ago. And uh, he was a great man, and it was a pleasure to meet him. So thank you for being here. So we give uh, <clears throat> Father God, today we come before you in one accord to give thanks. For you give us your protection, your provision. 
through those who serve and give of themselves for the benefit of others. We pray that your love, mercy, grace will sustain them every day as they reach out and serve the needs of others. We offer our thanks, Father God, and praise in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all, and have a great day. Thank you, Jerry. That was very moving. We uh, next want to honor our first responders, our unsung heroes, here in Minnesota, but we want to remember those people around the nation and around the world that are standing up to really protect us all and give care and love and generosity of their lives and their spirit to uphold humanity. So today, I want to begin with our first speaker, Mr. V.J. Smith, the national president of Mad Dads. Please welcome Mr. Smith. I need somebody to say hallelujah up in here. Because God is truly good. I know he's good in my life. How about yours? I, it, it gives me great honor to be here today to see that we can honor those people that can't be here, those nurses that have to work overtime, those doctors that have to work overtime, those young people that can't be here today, those, those individuals that really, really have to be working in the field in those, in those living care centers with our elderly, those people that we know that have to work so hard that are working overtime because they're overworked and overburdened right now those law officials that are working out in our streets, those community people that are working in our nonprofits that are guarding our community and protecting our families and children. This is serious times right now, times like never before. And I just want to say to we push for peace, GVI, Mother's Love, the churches, and all our coaches, those unsung heroes. How about them coaches? Can we give our coaches a big round? They look out for our kids. They feed them when we can't. They just transport them. They do all their work, and we forget about them so often. Somebody said even our teachers, we forget about those, but we've got some great teachers. we got great workers that work in our community. And to our officials, our African-American leaders, Jeff Hayden, Senator Hayden, Senator Champion, and, and Senator uh, and State Legislator uh, uh, Moran, I want to thank them for their leadership to fight for what's right in our community. Gun violence is hurting us. Our people are dying. We're at 41 homicides just in the city of Minneapolis. We're way above what we were last year. Crime is up. Officers are leaving. But God's not done with us yet. God is not done with us yet. God is not done with us yet. The movement is real. Black Lives Matter was important. It had to happen. But now it's time to reclaim, rebuild, and reunite. I'm ready to do that. But I can't do it by myself. I need all of you to do it with me. We've all got to stand up and fight for what's right in this community. I need you to stand up right now and lift your fist and say, power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Because if we give power to the people, not just to the people in this capital, but to people on the streets, to people in our communities, to people in our schools, then we can change this. We need health care. We need mental health uh, stability. We need to transform. We need to provide housing. We need to get people out of parks and to apartments. Can I get an amen on that? We can do it. We got what it takes to do it. We got what it takes to change America. We got what it takes to change Minnesota. We've got to start giving the people what they need. Justice is what we have to have, not just us, but just us. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you, V.J. Smith. Uh, V.J represents victory for Jesus. 
VJ Smith, okay? What a man, what a man. We love you, VJ. Next, we have Senator Karen Housley. Please welcome Senator Housley. Yeah. Can I get an amen for VJ? Uh, good morning, and thank you so much for asking me to join you today in prayer for these brave women and men across our state. This pandemic has brought so much uncertainty and fear, but it has also put a spotlight on the people who diligently and selflessly serve our communities with little thanks. You quietly keep us safe, healthy, protected, without asking for any recognition in return. Despite the risks of COVID-19, you keep showing up, and we are here today to say a loud thank you. With many of us having isolated and focused on protecting ourselves and our own families over the past few months, these unsung heroes continue to support everyone else around them. Your sacrifice, courage, and dedication haven't gone unnoticed. Amidst all the uncertainty of this year, your perseverance is inspiring. Doctors, nurses, long-term caregivers, and healthcare workers, you have cared for those fighting the virus and knowingly exposed yourself to the risks. Paramedics and firefighters, you have continued to be there for us in moments of uncertainty and loss. Law enforcement, you have withstood ridicule and protected our neighborhoods. Teachers, you have worked tirelessly to help our kids transition to a new way of learning. And last but certainly not least, our veterans, active military, and National Guard remain a steadfast line of defense, both at home and abroad. Your public service is irreplaceable, and we can't begin to thank you enough. Minnesotans will move forward with a renewed appreciation for the value of your service. Your role in our communities is priceless, and we are thankful for everything that you contributed. Thank you for being here and for all you do, and all of you are in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Halsley. We don't we need more strong women with beautiful hearts like that? Thank you, Senator Housley. Uh, next, I would like to welcome Shia Lowell, who is an attorney, served in public service in St. Paul, and who's running for Congress in the 4th District. Uh, please welcome Mr. Lowell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I too want to join all of the leaders here today and all of the people that are here and the millions out there in Minnesota to thank our first responders. What about another round for our first responders? <clears throat> we thank you from the bottom of our hearts of everything that you do to continue to maintain the greatness of America and to continue to make sure that America remain the light of the world. Yes. Have you ever had a dream so vivid when you wake up, you actually act on it? That is exactly what happened to my father half a century ago in Laos. And because of that dream, I'm here today in America. My father was a village chief trying to live and survive like everyone else in the jungle of Laos during the Vietnam War. One day he had a vivid dream where three spiritual beings or angels instructed him to clear a field large enough for an, airport to, for an airplane to land on. Once he cleared the field, he was to put a pole in the center of the field and hang a white cloth on it so that people can see from far away. When he asked these beings what was the purpose of building the field, they told him that the most powerful nation on earth will land on it. He did as he was told, and two and a half weeks later, an American helicopter land on this airport. Yeah. 
He could not believe that his dream actually come true. He did not know anything about America or what has or have, have ever seen an American before. But he believed that they can, if they can make metal fly and carry human beings in it, they must be the most powerful nation on earth. He promised himself then that he will fight and die for America and will follow America to the end of the earth. That airport that he built became the largest U.S. undercover operation during the Vietnam War in U.S. history. So after the United States caught out of Vietnam, he carried his children and followed America until he found her. Like the Von Trapp family in The Sound of Music, we too climb every mountain, cross every stream, and follow every highway until we found America, my father's dream and now our dreams. Once we arrived in America, we were sponsored by six different church denominations, and they treated us like, us, us like family. We could not understand why a bunch of white American would treat us so nice and welcome us as family. They gave us clothes when we were naked, they fed us when we were poor and hungry, and they took care of us when we were sick. Shortly after we arrived, we quickly found out what gave them this power to love others that are not like themselves. That power came from what they believe in the God that they worship, the almighty God and his son, Jesus Christ, now my God and also my savior. We need God's power today to heal our broken nation. That is why I join you in gathering here today that is why many of you are here today. If the power of God can make one race love one other race, not like them, like family, it can surely heal any broken nation, including America. There are those that do not believe in this power. They believe instead that sign is the only answer and that we are here by accident. Therefore, we must create our own world and take matters into our own hands. But I'm here to tell you that what happened to my father and my family, it's a God miracle. Thanks to God, yesterday we are fighting and dying for America and freedom and became refugees. But today we live the American dream and tomorrow we will hope to maintain the greatness of America. The Big Bang Theory of how the universe came into existence is so, so a miracle. How could everything we see in the universe that are light years apart came from one single point of light? The only explanation is that it's a miracle and act of God. And how could 13 colonies that defeated an English empire became the most powerful nation on earth, America. That is a miracle in itself. Our scientists have been searching for another planet like Earth for the longest time and have found none. So far, we are the only planet that can sustain Earth. Earth itself is a miracle. In fact, Everyone that is here today, thanking our first responders and praying for our nation to heal is a miracle. So trust in the power of God in his miracle. If he can create the universe from a single point of light, he can do anything. That there is ample evidence that, there are, that we are here by design and not by accident. If we're here by design, that makes you and me brothers and sisters in Christ. That means no matter what race you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what belief you believe, we are all God's children. 
And here in America, God's country, the most powerful free country on earth, no matter where you have come from in search of freedom, you are here and you are welcome. That here in America, we have become one big, beautiful God's family. That through the power of God, all things are possible. That the only thing that he asks of us when we are in trouble, like now on earth, and because we, he has granted us free will on earth, we must gather and ask for help and in prayer, like we are doing today. <clears throat> May God hear our prayers and heal our nation. May God bless each one of you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Well, we appreciate Shilo. We appreciate all the Hmong population here in the Twin Cities and around the nation. Thank you, Shia. Yeah. Next, please welcome Lacey Johnson. He's an engineer running for Congress in the 5th Congressional District. Mr. Johnson. Well, first of all, you should know this is the third time in two weeks I followed uh, Shia. <laughs> and uh, I got to step up my game. I got to look up this Dale Carnegie speaking course or something like that. But uh, I'll start off with this. Look, when I look out over this crowd, I see the diversity, all races, all genders, uh, everybody from all over the world. I see these great men who serve this country behind us. I see diversity back here. And I see my staff, I see my wife out there. And I, th and I look out over this mall and I see the flags flying. And it's on a cloudy day. And it reminds me of the songwriters who said, I got sunshine on a cloudy day and that's the way I'm feeling right now. And I'm serious. Uh, when they told me I had about two minutes, I thought about uh, Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg address. I think it was about 275 words. It took two or three minutes. I'm not going to be that good. I'm warning you right now and setting expectations. Uh, but I do want to come before you and thank God and thank our first responders. If you think about it, we got Oscars to recognize service in the movie industry. We got Grammys to recognize services in the music industry. Uh, we got all kinds of awards, politi political awards, uh, Nobel awards. We got a 10 part documentary on a basketball team. But when it comes to the people who save lives, we have absolutely no recognition hardly at all. Uh, and I'm glad we're here to try to correct that, even if on, on a small scale. But hopefully we can get to the day that this country have a, a national recognition on TV, recognizing people who actually save lives, one of the most important things there is. Yeah. And so I'm gonna try my best uh, to honor my two minute uh, restriction here. And <laughs> you know politician is hard and preachers <laughs> and things. Uh, but I'd just like to say to all you out there who ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. To all of you out there who give more than you receive. To all of you out there to whom serving is more important than being served. We want to recognize our first responders for the same thing. So I'll just end by saying this. To the EMT that came into my house and took me to Abbott Northwestern Hospital, of course, me being the hard-headed male that I am, I didn't think I needed to go. But they were very patiently and convinced me and worked with my wife and got me there. To the nurses in the emergency room at North uh, Memorial Hospital, to all the policemen that has come to my house, one was when my burglar alarm went off. Once, and believe it or not, last week when you read on, uh, in, in the news and read the newspaper about all this crazy chasing 
uh, going on in North Minneapolis. By the way, I live in North Minneapolis. I love the neighborhood. It's a great neighborhood. And I know a lot of the policemen. And I want to end uh, talking about them because they've been under a lot of assault. Uh, the, there are, are some great, great policemen out there. I know a lot of them personally. And I'd like to really see us recognize them for the great professional that they are. And, and it really hurt, hits home because most of these issues are not uh, philosophical living room discussion to me. They're real life. During that chase last week, I'll just cut to the core. One of the guys that they were chasing missed my wife in her car. I say by five or 10 feet. And so she could have easily been gone, except for the great job that the Minneapolis Police Department did in bringing these people uh, under arrest without any harm to the uh, community. And don't you let anyone convince you that they have an idea of anything that's going on when they start talking about defunding and demilitarizing the police. Those are people who don't understand what's, what's really going on in these communities. So I really want to recognize all of our first uh, responders. I want to thank them. I hope one day we recognize them even more and let's get a, a, a Grammy or an Oscar or something for our first performance. So thanks everybody. Thanks our first performance and pray for me. All right, Mr. Johnson, I just wish he could be a little bit more enthusiastic. All right, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Our keynote speaker today is Mr. John Turnipseed. He is the author of the book, Blue Bloodline. He's a speaker. He's a change agent. Please welcome the executive director of Urban Ventures, Mr. John Turnipseed. All right. Now I'm gonna tell you a story and you can call it what you want. Okay, just remember that you can call this story what you want. I was headed out um, to speak in a prison because I travel all over and I speak to prisoners. I speak anywhere they ask me to come. And I flew in the Dallas International Airport on November 9th after leaving my wife at home and it was about 7.30 in the evening. I got in my rental car and I got in the rental car and I was feeling a little, I don't know, I didn't feel like driving or whatever. And I went to turn on the radio. That's the last thing I remember. When I woke up, they were bamming on my car window. I had ran into the back of a car full of kids. Not hard enough to hurt them, but my tires were spinning because I was unconscious. People were bamming on my doors to wake me up, and when I woke up, I was incoherent. I, I didn't know what they were saying. See, I was having a heart attack, and I couldn't express it. So there was a lady that was driving the car. She jumps out and she motioned to turn my car off and I did and she reached inside and she said, he's having a heart attack, I'm a nurse. That was the first angel. Then a police officer showed up and stuff and cleared everybody out, cleared the cars in front of us. Then the fire department showed up and they, they jumped out and you know started working on me and stuff. And then the ambulance showed up but all the while, this nurse, she told them I had a runaway heart. They couldn't stop my heart from racing. And even though I had a defibrillator, it wouldn't calm down. But she just rubbed my head and rubbed my hands and called my wife for me and just made me peacefully, told me it was gonna be all right. And she was a Christian. We got to talk and she said, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, I do. She said, so do I. See, that was one of the third, the third angel that had showed up. Then they put me in an ambulance, and the highway was blocked off. But they needed to get me to the highway right away, so the police officer said, just follow me. So the police officer gave, got in front of the ambulance and got me to the hospital, desperate time. And it was, I was supposed to go to the heart hospital, but it was closed off. They couldn't get through that freeway. So they took me to this very small hospital. And I went into the hospital, and they put me on the table and three doctors came in and one doctor stood in the corner and started praying I asked the doctor you know that was giving me the IV am I dead he, he said no we pray for all our patients we're a Christian hospital God had sent the Calvary 
God had sent angels to just take care of me, and the only thing that they were concerned about at that moment was me. I felt by that, I just felt everything was going to be all right. They're praying for me. Over the loudspeaker, every half hour a verse comes on, and my favorite verse is John 3.16, and that came on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You can call it what you want. I know that God showed up and showed out in my life. I know he sent angels to look after me. And I didn't have a chance. They didn't ask for a tip. They didn't ask for anything. They just wanted me to be okay. That's service. That's 24 hours a day. We know in America... We don't think about it enough that we have somebody waiting for our call. We don't think about it. We have somebody waiting to run to our rescue. We don't think about it, but they ain't sleeping at 3 in the morning. They're taking care of us. They're waiting on us. They're away from their families to be with us, and they care about us. We are blessed beyond measure. And I'll tell you one thing. If, when my, if something happens at my house, the first person I want to see is a police officer. I'm say, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody else can come second or third. But if I'm in distress, I want the police to show up because they're going to know exactly who to call, what to do. You understand? And I hope I don't have to have the ambulance, but I know I can count on that. I go to sleep every night not worrying about, am I safe? We have a great city. You can call it what you want, but God is in control of all of this. He loves us and he cares for us. And each and every one of us has, I had eight professionals, eight first responders that tended to me, little old Johnny, sitting in the hospital, eight of them that didn't even know me, nobody that looked like me, and treated me like their son. So I am grateful for that because they got me back to that woman there. You understand? That's my wife, you know. Yeah, they got me back home. They affected more than just my life. I have 30 grandkids they affected. You understand? I have a wife, I have uh, 10 children that they affected. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for first responders. Without them, I'm not here today. So I hold my life to you guys. And I know that at any given time, servicemen, police officers, nurses, doctors, preachers would come to my aid if I need them. So in closing, I just, you know, like to say I don't, I don't know, I must be God's favorite kid. Because he's done so much for me. And if you don't feel that way, you don't know him. Hey, hallelujah. So thank you, everyone. Thank you um, for this event. Thank you for coming. And God bless our first responders. Amen. Mr. Turnipseed, thank you for giving us that perspective. It is God-centered, and we love it. Thank you very much. Please welcome back Robert Robinson and San Reeves. I want to dedicate this song to all our first responders to all those people who work so diligently and who never get a handshake, never get a pat on the back. Sometimes they get a check and sometimes they don't. I've always seen first responders as unsung heroes and very special people. When everyone else is running away from danger, they run into it. That's Dwayne Johnson. For the most part, we take our first responders for granted. That is until we need them. Then our lives, when our lives and our property depend on them, they are our heroes. And today we're here to honor them. And to begin that, that honor, we want to bring some people on that serve in those categories first responders, unsung heroes, and to begin with, uh, representing firefighters, Mr. Tu Fong, the national chairman of the Hmong community. Right. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the elected officials. It's an honor to be here today. Uh, representing the Hmong community, we support our first responders. As a U.S. citizen, I have served in the U.S. military as a naval officer, as a former police officer, and I, I know how difficult our, our jobs are. But I want to share that whether you are firefighters or a nurse, that very moment that when you on watch, you have a great feeling that you're watching, not just for yourself, but for the entire America, for the entire US citizen here. And I was stationed up in, uh, in the Gulf War, and we were having war with Iraq. And I was among one of the many officers that in charge of other men, making sure that our carrier is safe from inbound missiles and attack. And it's just a feeling that America allow immigrants like us to be part of the great America, to defend America, and how freedom is not uh, received or earned. And that moment, it triggered how I value America. And I think that we have so much to learn from each other, whether you're from another country, but the bottom line is that we are all Americans and we need to love each other. And just like the military, where when I first enter, we have over 100 men who speak different language from different background. But when we graduated, we graduate of honors, and we love each other. And the day of separation, we broke down and cried because 100 men is going to go 100 different ways to a different company, to another part of the world. And that is a feeling that America is about, is love, family. And we support our men and women in uniform and continue to better America to the highest freedom and level that should be. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Tu Fong, freedom, faith, and family. What a wonderful tribute. Thank you very much, Tu Fong. Uh, now we're representing doctors. Please welcome Dr. Thomas Schmidt. Good afternoon. Um, this pandemic has been tough. And um, one thing it's done is that it, it's caused a lot of pain. It's caused a lot of suffering, sickness, and even in death. But it, what it's also doing is bringing us together. And it's bringing us together to ask God to give us a stronger faith, stronger hope, and some stronger love for God and for people. This Mother's Day weekend, I, my wife lost her very best friend. I lost my mother-in-law. Bernice Evenson was not tested positive, but she had congestive heart failure. We didn't get to see her in the hospital, but she said the doctors were doing great. The nurses were taking good care of her. But she taught us faith, hope, and love. And we know that Jesus is her savior, and she had such a hope to be transformed, to go into heaven. And so with this, we didn't get any kind of formal funeral or anything, but the Holy Spirit was there and so I want to say that there's a lot of healing that needs to be done, not only physical, but spiritual and mental. So please keep gathering. Please talk to people you know. Call them. They need to talk to you. They need to hear from you. I want to read some scriptures here. And even, this is Romans 8, 23 to 26. And even we Christians, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, we also groan to be released from our pain and our suffering. We too, we wait anxiously for the day that God will give us our full rights as children, including new bodies as he has promised, bodies that will never be sick again and will never die. We are saved by trusting, and trusting means looking forward to getting something that we don't have. For a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he will get it, but if he, but if we keep trusting God for something that he hasn't, 
that hasn't happened yet, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. My prayer right now is for that, for all those people that are suffering right now, spiritually, physically, and mentally because of this pandemic and all of the unintended consequences, collateral damage. I pray God Almighty, bring people into their lives. I pray for all the healthcare workers in Minnesota that God, your Holy Spirit will empower them, empower us to have a greater faith, hope, and love so that we will bring you the honor and glory, but you will bless these patients whom you've given us to serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that sounds like the same kind of doctor that was uh, taking care of John Turnipseed. Uh, man filled with faith. Uh, love, love that very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Schmidt. Uh, representing nurses, we have Mary Jane Anderson. Please welcome her. It is such an important day today that we can give appreciation to all the men and women who work every day with a devoted heart and effort to keep others safe and well. Sometimes at the expense of their own safety and so this is why we call them heroes. Heroes are often recognized for their heroic deeds. Maybe some effort at the spur of the moment or at a time of eminent danger. And of course we saw this at the time of 9-11 or it is seen on many battlefields, we see the heroes. Or when a passerby pulls over and finds a person in need and their car is on fire, they will stop and pull that person out. Of course, those are heroes. But we have to honor today those heroes that are heroes every day and often are taken for granted, those first responders. Today I am honored to represent the nurses who work in a job that in many ways deals with the most often those in medical distress, mental anguish, or spiritual crises. Now more than ever, this is a time when it's very scary for them and for everyone. Nurses, besides giving a medication or a treatment, they are also there giving out so much energy and comfort and be that even that listening ear. COVID-19 has hit us unexpectedly and also has hit the medical field very hard in many ways. Perhaps the most difficult aspect is when a nurse can't give that human skin-to-skin -skin touch that's so often needed by the patients. A contagious disease even keeps the caregivers at arm's length and only permits the very necessary contact that's needed. Patients are often desperate in need for a smile, a gesture, an embrace as holding another's hand. But because COVID robbed them of their family connections, that nurse becomes the family to so many. And then those nurses have to go home to their own families after a long day of giving and giving and giving, they have to give more as they go home to their children, to their husbands or their wives. This constant putting out of love and energy can be exhausting, especially when it's done days, weeks, and now even months at a time. For this, they need our love and attention to give them that refueling and that energy to give them another day for them to serve again and help us stay alive. Nurses are hard to replace. Along with nurses, I also want to give a shout out to all the nursing assistants who alongside of the nurse do just yeah. as much as more. They do a lot and when they answer your call light to take care of so many needs. So they work in tandem together. They need our praise and our prayers as well. Both work long hours. When, where I work, the nurses work sometimes 12 hour shifts. It's a vocation, and it doesn't always end at the end of their shifts. Many times nurses are still working, catching up, because their duties are so grand and so enormous. They often pick up shifts when a nurse is sick, so they're called on to come in extra hours, and they, of course, they do. I am proud to be a nurse and proud to be a vocation. I am now in staff education at a senior care facility. I'm thankful that all the staff has kept COVID out 
Not one resident or patient has tested positive. And it's a lot of work to do that. But the elderly, our seniors, our heroes too, we ask them, how are you doing? And they say, I'm fine, but I worry about my kids. I worry about my grandchildren. My, my kids are out of work. You know, they've gone through a lot in their life. So this is just another bump in the road for them. So they are also need to think about in our prayers as they are heroes as well. But to those nurses who work in the front line, a prayer goes out to them especially. We appreciate their sacrifice. We honor their devotion. We especially honor their courage. God bless the nurses of Minnesota and all over the country and all over the world, no matter where and what position they work. Also bless their families who stand with them, who are called to share their nurse wives and husbands and mothers and fathers with us in the well-being and health of our communities. Thank you for coming to this rally. Go nurses. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jane. Man, you moved my heart, and uh, you're uh, just just really, I thought of my mother, she's 90, almost 95 years old, and she needs a lot of love right now. A lot, not a, a lot of people can get close to her. And I know your moms and dads, your grandmothers, your grandfathers, they must be in that kind of situation too. So thank you for remembering them. Very, thank you very much. Next, we want to represent par paramedics, and we've got Roxanne Cruins. Please. Welcome, Roxanne. Woo! That music. Anybody else out there like to sing? Yeah. Amen. That music, when it's from the heart, is so inspiring and it just rattles the heavens. I'm telling you. Thank you. I am Roxana Bruins. And there's so much about me, like so many of all of us, we have our own life story. Whew, so to take two minutes and choose something poignant and valuable to say about first responders, whew, that's a tough one. And you guys have all, you're all inspiring me to keep going and moving forward, no matter what happens. But God is my biggest inspiration, and I am so thankful, Amen. even for the strives, the strifes and the trials, because that teaches all of us to grow and keep going. I have been a paramedic, I, or EMT, I've been a paramedic. I am also a veteran of the United States Air Force and also served in Desert Storm in 91. My medical training didn't start when I went into the Air Force to become an air vac technician on those C-130s up there. I actually went to a, a health class at Cooper High School, and we got to learn CPR, and I was like, yes, I can save somebody. Well, I was in high school. I had no idea when that first opportunity was gonna come to be able to save someone. And I hope to God I really never had to do it. But two weeks later, after receiving my card, I was in Alexandria, Minnesota, and our family was at a hotel, and there was this big ruckus. And I'm like, what the heck? You know, as a teenager, I was kind of shy, but something was seriously going on. People were shoving people, there was somebody pumping on somebody's body, and instantly, the adrenaline kicked in, the knowledge that I had just received kicked in, and I was, I, I was 16 years old managing the scene. And those of you that are in EMS, and you know what managing and keeping the scene safe means. Somehow or another, through God and courage and strength and perseverance, I kept this man alive until at that point, I wasn't a paramedic until the paramedics came and transferred over care. That man lived. I still remember the shirt, the pants. I remember it like it was yesterday. You go through and get your education, whatever it is, whatever your vocation is, whatever your occupation is, 
You can learn the books, but until you are actually doing it in real life, you can't say that you actually have experience, and the real life experience is way different. Being in that hotel, providing C life giving CPR for this man, I had, did they tell you, yeah, they can barf on you. Well, okay, so great, you hear it, you read it, but until you experience it, same thing with nurses. I mean, I, I went on to become a nursing assistant, I kind of went up the trajectory. I went on to become a nursing assistant while I was going to school for paramedic, um, and EM, you know, EMT and then paramedic, there's different levels. And it's, it's important to keep going and keep practicing, but it, we are a team. EMS, emergency medical services, first responders, doctors, you know, military. They're, if you think about it, there's a camaraderie and a uniformity of passion, of courage, of dedication. It takes, you know, God's, we are told, we are all given different and unique gifts and talents, and we are to share them. When I graduated with my master's, our keynote speaker said, we all have a voice. How are you gonna use it? I choose to use my voice, choosing to appreciate and recognize the goodness that people have to offer. I don't judge people by color because we are all human and that unifies us. But bigger than that, I want people to see the color of my character, which is integrity, truth, and honesty, and a love for God, which equates to faith and family and our American heritage. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. Next, we've got representing teachers, May Schoen. I am humbled and honored to be invited by the Minnesota Coalition to appreciate our first responders to represent the teachers in Minnesota. When this unseen pandemic took over, we had to adjust how we teach to our students. Our homes, in my case was my dining room, became our teaching space. The students' iPads and their computers became their whiteboards, their desks, and their classrooms. This was the most challenging thing we experienced together as teachers and students. You see, teaching is not about, oh, you see, teaching is about being present together, building rapport and relationship with each other. It's great with today's technology that we're able to teach, uh, reach out and teach online. However, it's not the same because there's so many things we are missing. For example, our students' greetings in the morning, the books we read together, the smiles and high fives that we finish when we finish our work or when we have an aha moment together. As an ELL, English language learner teacher, I have the privilege to work with many immigrant students. Sometimes they come not knowing any word in English, but they show up every day excited and ready to learn. I miss working with them and showing them my horrible drawings. It makes me so excited when they can start speaking broken English and then when they start speaking full sentences and can communicate with me, it makes my heart smile and fill with joy. I miss those moments with my students. This fall, we're starting school off with online learning, but we're optimistic that this pandemic, when this pandemic is managed, school, schools can be open again. Teachers and students can go back to their classrooms and learn together. In closing, I want to uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of the teachers, to all the courageous, loving, caring, and wonderful teachers out there. I know we'll conquer this crisis together. To all the students, keep learning, keep reading, be safe, and we shall get through this. Just know that your teachers are thinking of you and can't wait to get back to the classroom with you. I'm sending blessings and positive thoughts to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, May, and, and thank you on behalf of all the teachers all throughout this country that take care of our children. Next, we want to bring on law enforcement. 
Crystal Scott from the Minneapolis Police Department, and Brian Sturgeon from the West St. Paul. He's the Chief of Police. So uh, please welcome them. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm really grateful to be here this morning. Um, you know, I'm gonna re remember all my words that I that I thought I was gonna say. Oops, somebody's right. order. But uh, anyways, uh, it's a common joke in Minnesota. You joke about the weather or whatnot. Um, and we, you know, as Minnesotans, we complain about the, the the heat. We complain about the snow. We complain about how co how cold it is or whatnot. Um, and I'm really grateful to to say that I'm not complaining this morning because I I did wake up this morning. So that's most definitely a blessing. Um, but uh, so I've been with Minneapolis for about four and a half years. Um, my name is Crystal Scott. They do call me Ruby. Uh, it's my grandmother's name and happens to be my name on Facebook. So, um, but I, I usually come with my partner, which is uh, he's Timothy Davis, um, in which we work uh, with juvenile outreach together. He's not here as he worked um, until 5 a.m. this morning. So I'm here to represent him. But uh, you know, it's been this wasn't my dream to become a police officer. It was education. Um, my my parents were for me. Uh, army, army folks, and you know, I was asked, you know, can I go to? Or I asked actually to go to the army. I'm like, no, you know, you find it, find a different route or whatnot. So I went through education, and um, glory be to God, you know, uh, this this became my calling. You know, after I was in my career or whatnot. So, and uh, I accepted that uh, with it, you know, and you know, wide eyes, uh, you know, open heart, and you know, was ready to obviously take on the challenge or whatnot. Um, you know, in this four and a half years, you know, most would consider me a baby. Uh, but I most definitely have seen, you know, way more than I, I, I wanted to see um, in my four and a half years uh, on this department. Um, but in the same time, you know, I, um, you know, I was asking, uh, you know, one of my friends or whatnot, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I wonder why I really, I really do this, and, um, you know, she's, you know, I, she always, you know, prays for, prays for me or whatnot, and she says, well, you know, um, you know, well, obviously God, you know, called you uh, so that, you know, they could see the God in you. Um, and I think that, you know, I think I, I do this, obviously I do this for you. I do this because um, I, I love this job. And no matter, I know that a lot of, you know, not only law enforcement, nurses, doctors, or whatnot, all of our first responders, first responders are experiencing, you know, a low in morale because, you know, you need us. And, you know, we have people that are dying, that are, you know, hurting or whatnot, that we can't necessarily help, and, you know, that hurts us or whatnot, but, you know, just know that, obviously, you know, when we get down or whatnot, when, you know, we're experiencing bad days, uh, that we're not by ourselves, that, obviously, you know, God is right by us, and, you know, those, I always think about the, the footprints in, in the sand, you know, you feel like you're by yourself, you're walking by yourself, but, um, really, in reality, we're being carried by God, you know, by our ancestors, by, you know, people that walked their life before us, um, you know, and we're not by ourselves, and you know, to for our, my, you know, to for my first responses to remember that you know we're not alone, and you know, continue to fight, and you know, as you know, we're in this war zone, um, the pandemic, and you know, whatever else is going on, that to keep walking through because you know it's not the end of the road, um, and to keep fighting. So I really appreciate um, being here. I'm very grateful, um, and I'll send it over here. So. All right, yeah. Thank you for inviting me today. I was not prepared to speak. I was told I was going to have a little speaking uh, of time here, and so I'm going to adapt and overcome like our military does all the time. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Our motto in West St. Paul is to serve with honor and integrity, and that is to serve our community. I don't care if it is individuals from North Minneapolis that comes through our town or longtime residents. We will serve, and we do serve with honor and integrity to everyone. And we need your assistance and your help. Our community throughout the metro area, throughout the country is hurting. Our first responders are hurting. What is keeping our honor and integrity together is you. A card of thanks, a package of Oreo cookies, believe it or not, to your first responders means so much to them. We are resilient. We are. End of May, first part of June, Little West St. Paul, we had over 250 police officers in our town due to rioting and looting. You did not hear that on the news. You did not see that. Robert Street was hit really hard. The community support, 
from all across the metro area allowed our officers to continue to serve 16 hour days for two weeks straight without any time off. Community involvement is important to maintain safety and security for everyone. Faith also takes a huge part. Several years ago, an officer from a neighboring department stopped a vehicle in our town and was shot and killed. We had a, a chaplain that arrived on scene. He just kind of stayed over in the corner for hours. He said, I am here praying. And that created such a calming effect on everybody. Prayers, cards of thanks mean a ton. The team of first responders, police, fire, EMS, physicians and nurses, it is all a team effort. Thank you. Thank you to our officers who stand in harm's way to protect us all. Thank you again, both of you, and thank you for all police officers throughout the nation and throughout the world. Next, I'd like to bring up representing veterans, Mr. Ron Lasuda. First thing I want to do is turn to my right, bow down, and say, thank you, Mr. Robinson. Yeah, yeah. He is the man, I'm telling you. Yes, he is. I loved him. He was good, is what I'm telling you. Mr. Turnip, see, you and I have a disagreement, I hate to tell you. You said the Lord said you were the man, you were the number one guy. Well, I got to tell you something. December the 12th, this past December, I died. 24 minutes I was gone. I had paddles on me six times, two paddles they couldn't bring me to. Then I had six male nurses every four minutes jumped on my chest. Here I am. I'm good. We're close. But that's not what here I'm here to talk about. I just want to tell Mr. Turnipseed he's mistaken. That's all. That's why I'm telling him that. Veterans, this week is 76 years since the end of World War II. Okay? Any World War II veterans? I didn't see any. Are there any World War II veterans? How about Korean veterans? Vietnam veterans? Yay! Thank you for serving. All veterans, show me a hand of veterans here. Just keep in mind, veterans, you know, we've got America's backside all the time. We've served our time in the war, but we know what's going on in the world. Just always keep that, keep that in mind is what we need to do. Uh, and I want to tell you an embarrassing moment. When I was in Vietnam a number of years ago, you know, when my fellow soldiers were hurt or died, I've got to tell you, nurses, this is from me to you. Not one time did I ever think about a nurse when I was in Vietnam. Just a few years ago, when some of the nurses spoke at our Vietnam memorial we had, all of a sudden it hit me that we, the, the soldier, I fought every few weeks, every month or two. These ladies, we're in doo-doo all the time. I mean, think about it. Think about nurses, and, and again, I'm thinking about doctors now, I, doctors, but think about what nurses do for everybody, how happy they are, what they do for everybody. And what I want to tell you is, if you live around a nurse or a doctor or a first responder, and you see them, you see them in a restaurant, and you can afford it, buy their dinner, buy their lunch, buy it for them. I do it to fellow soldiers, but you, you buy it for them. You see them in your apartment that you live in, thank them. Maybe, well, I don't know if you can give them a hug now because of what's going on, but <laughs> give them a fist bump, you know, give them one of those. But all I wanted to tell you was, where would we be without our first responders and our nurses and our doctors? Thank you very much.
Thank you, Ron. That was uh, heartfelt, and you moved everybody here. And let's remember what he said about buying lunch, buying dinner, buying breakfast for those people that you see that are first responders. Let's let them know how much we love them. Next, please welcome up, representing the National Guard, Kelly Ammerman. I first want to say as a member of the uh, retired member of the National Guard, I just want to say that I feel I'm, I'm in great hands. Look at these three back here in the uniform. They're serving, uh, taking my place. I am very honored, privileged to have served this nation as a U.S. Marine for 10 years and 12 years in the Army National Guard. Um, and I couldn't be prouder than to be part of the Army National Guard's 34th Infantry, the Red Bull Division. Uh, they, they date back to the Civil War as the first Minnesota, became the 34th Infantry during World War I, and have an amazing, amazing resume behind them, right up into including how they handled the riots of uh, two months ago, where they were able to connect with the protesters, the peaceful protesters, and make a connection, and, and make them realize that we're the community too. We're here with you. We feel the pain as you feel the pain, as you watch that horrible video, and, and we're just, we're here to protect you, we're here to protect everything else. So, in any case, uh, I, I hope I can remember my uh, speech here. I tried to memorize it, but unfortunately, my memory's about half as long as my hair. So, <laughs> forgive me. In any case, the National Guard does predate the active military services, and currently in, involves, uh, has members of former active services. Uh, I've, I've served with former active Army, active Air Force, active Sailors, as well as uh, active Marines. Um, and they are very capable at all levels. Um, I've worked with some fine officers that they point the direction, some amazing troops that, with their courage and their honor and commitment, get things done. And of course, we've got the sergeants to make the trains run on time. In any case, uh, they are not to be underestimated. We had some amazing 19-year-old cooks and 19-year-old infantry, and MPs, mechanics, weapons experts, technicians of many, many different fields. Um, again, not to be underestimated. I don't care what any politician says. In any case, uh, like I said, I'm proud. I'm, um, I don't know how to follow these guys up here, but. The amazing, the amazing music we have over here. Um, and I just, uh, as a National Guard member, former member, retired, um, I'm just, I'm honored. And we don't, we don't serve for, you know, the, all the accolades and stuff like that. We just want to do our job. You know, we, we learn, we learn leadership skills, we learn technical skills, and we learn how to be human beings and, and serve others in whatever capacity we can serve in. But in any case, um, thank you for being here. Um, it's my honor, it's my privilege. Um, have a great day, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the nice Minnesota weather, and take care. Thank you. thank you, Kelly, and thank you to our National Guard. I'd like everybody, whoever served as a doctor, a nurse, a paramedic, a teacher, a firefighter, a law enforcement, a caregiver, a veteran, or a National Guard service, please, please wave your hand. Please wave your hand. Okay, let's, let's hear it for all of them. You see, half, half the people here have been serving us. Thank you so much. And now to conclude our program, we'd like to bring on Mr. Robinson and Mr. Reeves. Please bring, bring them on. What kind of appreciation do we have for these two gentlemen? All right, thank you. What's at our back? Let's hear it for them. Thank you, Minnesota State Patrol. Now, to end the program today, we want to thank all of our first responders. We want to thank our uh, organizing committee, and we want to thank all of our speakers. 
and we would like to invite you all to spread out on the steps. We're going to take a group picture together with our uh, Mr. Robinson, with Mr. Reeves, and all of our speakers. So spread out on the steps. We're going to take a group picture. Come on up, everybody.